Fun fact, I am actually in the process of learning how to create my own pumpkin chai because what I have found is not a lot of places know how to make a pumpkin chai without it being strictly flavored milk. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Liz and today we're going to be talking about the books I'm scared to read. I actually did this video last year and I was re-watching it for two reasons. First reason being that I wanted to make sure I didn't have any repeats in this video. And the second reason being that I wanted to see if I had actually read any of those books that I talked about in that video. And I'm very, very impressed with myself and happy to say that I did read quite a few books that were talked about in that video. I think it was just kind of like, it was the right timing, like season wise to read certain books. I'm just gonna like give myself a pat on the back because honestly, I think I've grown as a person, grown as a reader, and I feel like I'm just the bravest person on earth. Not really, it's not that deep, but it is cool to go back in time and see what I was afraid to read and how I was able to overcome that. I tried to make sure that I got a list of books or genres or authors to talk about today that I am afraid to read that are all brand new and fresh. There are still a few from last year that obviously I didn't read or am still afraid to read. I'm not gonna repeat that because if you care to watch that video, you can go ahead and watch that video now. I think this video is really fun because as readers, everyone enjoys different genres, different different authors, different tropes in their books. And I think it's okay to not read everything. It's okay to stay in your comfort zone or to be afraid of reading a certain series or author, but it's also good to push yourself outside your comfort zone. Cause there are a few books that I read and ended up enjoying that I was afraid to read. And if I hadn't pushed myself outside my comfort zone, then I never would have read that story. So I do think that there are some pros and cons to forcing yourself a little bit to read certain books. Welcome to my TED talk. Without further ado, let's get in today's video. A lot of these books that I'm gonna be talking about, I don't have the physical copy of. I just know that they've always been on my radar, but just have never pulled the trigger on buying them. Or there might be a couple that I do own and I just am lazy and don't feel like getting them out of my TBR cart. So I'm just gonna put pictures of the books up somewhere on screen. We're gonna start off with a bang and that is A Little Life. I am terrified to read this book. And the big reason why, I think I'm very valid for feeling that way because the big reason why is everyone I've talked to who has read this book has said it is the one book that they will never recommend. That right there just immediately is like, okay, then why would I wanna read that book? But I've also heard so many people saying and raving about this book and saying how it's such a beautiful story and that it's just so emotional. And I don't know a ton about this book except that it follows, I think three or four guys who are in college together and it's kind of about their life stories and you're following them on their path in life but that's literally all I know people who have read this book are probably screaming at me saying that's not what this book is about I'm just generalizing what I feel like I've heard bits and pieces of I've heard people say that you need to read it when you are feeling really good like at a, at a good part of your life like feeling happy or you need to seek a therapist immediately after reading find someone to talk to so that right there just kind of immediately it gives me some nerves going into this book but I will say it is a book that I really really want to read eventually Eventually, I've heard people sop their eyes out while they read it and that is just it talks about so many heavy topics and so much trauma that you're unpacking and I want to be a part of that conversation I really want to know what is in this book that has given people these intense feelings it's been a while since I've cried while reading a book so I feel like that would be a good one to start with I don't think I'm gonna read it this year I honestly think I'm gonna wait until next year to read this book just to kind of like psych myself up to reading it we'll see I need to make sure I like sandwich it between two to like really fluffy, happy romance books. So that way I am okay after reading it. Next up we have Babel or Babel, however you pronounce it. I've heard it both ways. I have no clue what the proper pronunciation is, but this book is also written by, I believe the same author who wrote The Poppy Wars. I read Poppy Wars. That was in my video last year, actually of being terrified to read the rest of that series. Update, still have not read them. I've heard a lot of people raving about this book and this is another type of fantasy world. The reason why I'm kind of nervous to read it is just knowing after reading Poppy Wars and the content that is dealt with in that book, it makes me a little nervous going into this one and not knowing really what it's about or what it's gonna talk about. It's a fantasy world that has a lot of world building and like there's different rules to this world that I have heard people say are kind of confusing. It is a thicker book as well, so that makes me a little nervous. I will say I do want to eventually read it. I have not bought it yet and I haven't bought A Little Life either. So I think once I actually buy them, if you ever see me in a video and I have those books, it's probably gonna clue 
you in that I'm about to read them most likely, but I think that'd be another book I would maybe read next year. Next up, we have the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I have a few reasons for why I am afraid to read this, this trilogy. First reason being that I bought the first book when it came out, which was years and years ago. I own the first two. I haven't bought the third one yet just because I haven't read them yet. I feel like it's been on my TBR for so long now. It's been just sitting mocking me on my shelf for so long now that I'm almost like unmotivated <laughs> to read it. It makes me want to read it less and less. And that is a problem. And so they've been just sitting on my shelf for the longest time. And I think what is going to eventually make me read it is if I do like a themed video, maybe in February around like Valentine's Day, since it's once upon a broken heart, I feel like I could do a video with that. And that would kind of force me to read it. So I think I'll be another book series or trilogy that I'm going to read next year. So a lot of these books I'm talking about today, apparently I'm going to be reading within the next year. I did read the Car of All trilogy and I really enjoyed those books. And this is like the spin off of that series. Next up. <sighs> Onyx Storm. Oh. This is the third book after Fourth Wing. You better believe I will be reading this book as soon as it is released in January. However, that does not mean I'm not terrified going into this book. If you have read Fourth Wing and read Iron Flame, you know exactly why. I know I am going to be emotionally wrecked in Onyx Storm. I just already can see it coming. I know it's just a train wreck, car crash just waiting to happen. It feels like I'm watching in slow motion. My emotions just but you know, I'm gonna force myself to go through that trauma and I'm going to read this book as soon as it comes out in January. But that still doesn't stop me from being terrified. <laughs> I need to be emotionally wrecked every once in a while. I can't be happy all the time. It's okay to, if you're gonna cry. If you're gonna cry, let it be over a book. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is actually a whole genre. So I did this last year. I talked about sci-fi. I'm actually slowly getting into sci-fi this year. So I feel like I'm not so scared of that genre anymore. But the next one I wanna talk about is horror. <laughs> if you've watched any of my recent videos in the, within the last month or two, you saw that I read a horror book accident in my 24 hour <laughs> reading vlog. I did not realize that book was horror until I was midway through. And I gotta say, I don't know why I didn't know that because the cover clearly gives it away that it's horror. It's literally sister made a monster. It's terrifying the cover. But that is also why I bought it was because I thought the cover looked really cool. I have found out the hard way that horror might not be the genre for me. I don't know. I have a lot of conflicted feelings on this because I enjoy a good mystery thriller. I like getting kind of chills while reading a book. I like that thriller aspect of it. However, what I don't like about horror is the gore of it. I've noticed in both horror books that I've read within the last year, both dealt with a lot of gore and like blood and guts and just like very gross, gross stuff. This is why I'm confused because I love a good action sci-fi thriller movie. I don't mind watching the gore on TV, but yet when I'm reading it, it's almost worse. I don't know if it's because my imagination just kind of runs wild and it's like, oh, this is probably the scariest thing I've ever seen. And I'm picturing literally the grossest thing you can imagine while reading the descriptions. I don't know if it's that or what. And I think horror, just what I've read so far, I haven't enjoyed. So it's making me think that I'm just not gonna like any books that are horror. I don't know if that'll change. I still wanna read Steve, a couple Stephen King books like Billy Summers. I know that's more of like a mystery thriller, like a detective trying to solve a murder case or his book that's about JFK. I know that that's been raved about and I don't think that one is necessarily horror. So I think I could like slowly branch into Stephen King if I read those books, but I don't know if I could ever get into his actual horror books. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is a certain author. And I feel like people are going to be mad at me for saying this, but that author is Kristen Hanna. Oh. I'm a little scared to read her books if I'm being so for real. The reason why is because I know a lot of her books have to do with historical fiction, which nothing wrong with that genre. I've read a couple books that were historical fiction, but that was a long time ago. And I don't know if it'd be for me. I know that a lot of her books are very emotional and they leave a huge impact on people. People, and I just don't know where I'll fall on that scale if I will end up loving it or if I'll end up hating it. I don't want to not like her books. So if I, I'm afraid of reading her books and then giving them bad reviews because I just didn't enjoy them. I don't know. Like I've heard such good things about, you know, The Nightingale, The Women, Firefly Lane. I even watched the first season of Firefly Lane on Netflix and I enjoyed it. So I don't know what is stopping me. There's some sort of mental block that won't let me read her books <laughs> and I don't know why. I think I want to at least read one of them this upcoming year. I really want to push myself because that's a whole author and a whole selection of books that I forced myself not to read and they could end up being my favorite books of all time. So if you guys have any recommendations
recommendations for what would be the perfect book to start with by Kristen Hanna, please let me know because I truly, truly do want to read her books and I don't know why it's taken me so long to get there. But yeah, please, please don't shun me for saying that. I know a lot of people love her books and I respect that. I think that's great and I hope I can one day love them as well. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this just gave you some entertainment. You can see into the mind of Liz and what I like and what I don't like. I am really happy that I did this video again because I really enjoyed looking back on the one I did last year. So I think getting to move forward, I would love to do this video every year because obviously there were books that I read last year that I was afraid to read and there's new ones this year. And I know next year will be the same thing. There'll be new books that I'm kind of hesitant to start reading or genres or authors, whatever it may be. It's good to push yourself outside your comfort zone. I do want to do that more with my reading and not be so scared all the time of what I'm reading. But at the same time, I don't want to put pressure on myself. So this is all just good fun. But once again, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video. Happy reading. Bye.